Blender's getting a new hair system, which could replace most if not all add-ons that currently exist in Blender to create hair, and it's a good alternative for Maya's hair tool XGen. To do all that, it uses geometry nodes, and today I want to give you a first insight into what's possible and not possible with the system, give you a workflow that I've developed over the last week, and also share with you a node setup to create children here with this new system. Currently, the system only exists in Blender 3.3, which is currently as I'm recording this in Alpha. I'm going to put a download link to that in the description. Once you're in Blender 3.3, there's a new object that we need to use to use this system, which you can find in the curve section, and it is called empty here. We need to select the curve object and then we can switch from object mode to scope mode and then we have a few tools here if you press t we have the comb and delete snake hook grow and shrink and then annotate if you encounter the problem that you can't actually add the object the empty hair object is grayed out you can just select an object which then will be used as the surface basically and then you can just go to curve and then add empty hair to the scene so you know the easiest way to do that to, to work with this now would be to go in here use the add brush go to the surface of the object that is selected for these this curve empty and just use your cursor and add some curves to the surface. One thing to note, these pieces are not connected. So the empty here is not necessarily connected to the sphere. It just uses the sphere as the surface board attaches the hairs onto, I guess. Then you can go to the comb brush and then you can just comb it in, you know, whatever direction you want it to comb. And then the snake hook brush, you can draw these hairs out longer. And then we also have the grow and shrink tool, which is similar to the snake hook brush, but a little bit more, I guess, subtle. If you now go to the add brush, you can define a few things. So we have the count here. So how many hairs you want to add at once. The length, of course, is just how long the hair is supposed to be when you add it to the surface. And you can also change the points. Points are basically like the handles that you have for curves when you just added like a bezier curve, for example. So if you have a curve which has four points, then we add a curve which has eight points. We can see this one's smoother than the one with four because it has more points that sort of control the shape of the curve. But there's one more thing we need to do to make these curves as smooth as they can be. We need to go into the render settings. We go to, down to the curves section and then we have two settings here. The curves curve subdivision is basically for the render and the viewport display, of course, is for the viewport display. Three is the maximum, so if you set it to three, we have the maximum smoothness for all the curves. So what we can do now is we can just go in here and we could uh, concept a quick hairstyle. Of course, the longer the hair is, the more points you need to have so that these hairs don't go through the surface. So the longer the hair is, the more points you need to have to shape it around the surface of the object. And if we see that we need more hair strength, we can go into the add brush again and we can enable the interpolation settings. Interpolation basically means that if you add new curves, they kind of follow the surrounding curve and we can define how they sort of interpolate and kind of copy the settings of the surrounding curves. If we need more density here for the top, for example, because it's kind of balding right now, we can just go in here and kind of add more. And as you can see, they kind of follow quite well the shape of the already existing hair strands. So you can see it's very, very, very useful to concept a hairstyle very, very quickly. One more thing to note, we have one more setting that we can change for all these tools, which is the setting right here. We have sphere or projected. What that basically means is how it applies the brush to these hairs. So these hairs, of course, in 3D space have different distances from the viewport. This controls basically how the brush is affected by this distance change, I guess you could say. Of course, you can also change the brush follow, which is basically similar to all the other brushes that we have in Blender. So the big change that we have here compared to the hair particles is with hair particles, you kind of want to go with children hair because with children hair, you can kind of control a lot of hair with just a few hair strands. With this one, you can basically control all each individual hair strand. You can be very detailed with this. One thing I hope though is that they add more tools to the system. I think tools that would be useful here would be the mask brush, the pinch brush, especially maybe we could even use face mask in here to kind of separate these hair strands into individual parts, which you can then kind of affect a little bit easier rather than having to affect them all at the same time. Of course, grooming is only really the beginning of what we can do with the hair. Now we can actually enable a geometry node system to these hair curves. If you can't find it, I think it got a new icon, which looks like this now. If you're wondering, if you go into rendered view, you don't see any hair. That is because we need to first define the radius for the curves in the geometry nodes. So the way we do that is we add a new node, which is called the curve set curve radius node. Don't plug it in right away. It can crash quite quickly, so make sure that um, you change the radius before you plug it in. 0.01 works quite well for me. So if I plug it in into this line right now, we can see we can see the hair now. Of course, if you want to add a material, we can do that as well. You know, we add a new node, material, set material, plug that in here, and then we can select the material that is applied 
to this curve. Instead of the principled BSDF, I use the shader principled hair BSDF, plug that in there, and then we can go back into the geometry nodes and select the hair material right here. This is basically all you need to really start creating hairstyles with this new system. As you can see, because we use geometry nodes, maybe the entry point might be a little harder than using particle hair, but I think it's especially worthwhile to learn it because it gets better and better and better as time progresses. One thing to note, if you want to use the system to create, for example, simulations where you simulate hair waving in the wind, that is currently not necessarily possible. You can kind of animate it using geometry nodes, but it's not going to be physically rea realistic. It can't really get affected by force fields for example at least not from what i know so far i have seen that you can apply geometry to bones with geometry nodes but i don't haven't really experimented with that too much yet so it might be possible to animate here that could be a good alternative to simulating the hair now that you know how to create hair in the system let's quickly go over my workflow that i use to create my hairstyles with the system the first thing that i do is define the hair shape itself so defining the thickness a little bit more in detail or adding stuff like noise to deform the curves could be a few things you could do to change the individual curves for example sometimes the hairstyle kind of depends on the shape and that's when i find the shape before i actually create the hair itself once I've defined the look of the hair strand, it is time to create the first volume of the hair, which we can then refine afterwards. The inner layer that you can't really see, but kind of fills up the hairstyle that you don't, can't see through the hair and see the skin underneath. I also like to add multiple of these empty curve objects to make grooming a little bit easier for myself. Always affecting all the hair that exists can be a little bit annoying. So if you want to be a little bit more detailed, I would recommend using multiple empty hair objects. Once the volume is set, I like to add a second layer, which is basically kind of adding more detail to the surface of the hair, kind of adding individual hair strands to add a little bit more structure to the hairstyle. And sometimes I even create a third layer, which is basically for these floating hairs that sort of stick out of the main hair body or shape that you can oftentimes see in hairstyles as well. Of course, if you can affect every single hair strand, that can be quite tedious and time consuming, which is where geometry nodes come in and we can actually create different systems that can enable us to create hairstyles maybe a little bit easier. I'm going to put a download link to my node setup in the description. And then once you apply the material to your empty object, you can see we have a children here. And then we have a few settings that we can change here in the modifier tab. You can change the amount of children here that you have. You can also change the thickness in the render. And then we can also change the spread, basically how, mu how much the particles spread apart. And then of course, we can also change the material. The system isn't perfect. So, you know, if you have a better system, then feel free to you know post them in the comments if you know where to find it, or if you maybe even have some improvements that I can make here. If you want to go a little bit more in detail to change the clumping, you can change this curve here. If it's supposed to clump a little bit more, we can do that. If it's not supposed to clump at all, we can kind of spread it out a little bit more here. If you don't know where the actual main curve is, we can now also go in here and we can highlight the main curve right here. If we select this node here and then we can press M, we can actually see the main curve. This way we can more easily, you know, affect this curve in scope mode. And because sometimes it's not really clear how where you can actually affect the curve because you can only affect them on the points of this curve. I also added a show handles node that if you enable it pressing M, you can see all the points where you can affect the shape of the curve. Of course, if you want to render this, make sure to mute these nodes again so that they're not visible in the actual render. And this way you can fine tune this system even more. Geometry nodes give you so much possibilities of how you can change the shape of the curve, maybe even completely change the way you work with these curves to create the hair. That I think as time passes, we get so many different approaches and so many different node setups that at some point we probably get even a workflow that is similar to XGen, where you just use individual curves to create the main, I guess, guiding hair. And then, you know, this node system does everything else working similar to how you would work in XGen. So as time progresses, I think the system will only get better. And, you know, the earlier you start to uh, learn it, the better you'll be off. And um, the faster you can create awesome hairstyles with the system. Make sure to check out one of these other videos. Maybe I'll see you next time. See ya.